the story around the oil industry and the hydrocarbon is if there is one sector in which transparency is often talked about and demanded, that will be the extractive industry, and in particular, the oil and gas sector. Little wonder that the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, or EITI, commended the new round of financial reporting by Nigeria's State Oil Corporation, the NNPC. But there's a whole lot more around transparency in the hydrocarbon industry. Let's get more insight into this highly complex industry with Ademola Adigun, who is an oil and gas consultant and is joining me this evening from our Abuja studios. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Good evening. It's good to have you here. Thank you so much. So what are the key issues when we talk about transparency in the extractive industry? Um, the key issue is actually for knowing the value chain between what you're producing, what you're earning, how what you've earned is spent, and where the money goes into. So it's tough from even understanding what the sector contributes to the country. So we've been exporting oil in Nigeria for so many years, but nobody can accurately always tell you how much of the oil is coming from the ground, where the money is going to, how the revenue flows, who takes what it is, and what is the issues around it. So you see the last NNPC report, you see issues like subsidiaries only owing the government money. You see issues when NNPC is owing government money. You see issues around remittances from IOCs. So there's a complex um, process, which shouldn't be. Uh, anybody who is in government in Nigeria or the Minister of Finance or Central Bank Governor or ordinary Nigerians should know how much oil we extract, how much we sell the oil, how much profit we make from the oil, where the profit goes and how the money is spent. But this is not what happens in the country. There are so many complexities around it. Uh, show me the money. Uh, well, you've got a whole lot more questions to ask you on the show tonight. Uh, Adimola, just hang in there very quickly. Of course, you are all aware it's a big day of elections in the United States. The incumbent president, uh, Donald Trump, is currently speaking at Arlington in Virginia. Let's take a listen. Probably in the history of the world, nobody's ever seen before. Um, there's a tremendous love going on in this country. And there's really a tremendous unity. There's a tremendous unity. Nobody's ever seen that. Where you take an airport, and the airport's not big enough to hold the crowds. Nobody's ever seen a thing like that. And our opposition, as you know, would have a few people sitting in circles. And that's okay. That's not abnormal. That's not abnormal, actually. I mean, that's the way it is. But we would get crowds of 50,000 people, 45,000 people, more. Nobody's ever seen anything like that. So it was an honor. They're great people. These are people that... Uh, they appreciate what we did, and they also remember before I got there and before we all got there. This group has been with me. A lot of them are very young, but they've been with me, many of them, for a long time, right? A long time. And I just want to, I really came here to thank you all, and then I'm going to say, and get immediately back to work. <laughs> U.S. election voting on the way, incoming President Donald Trump speaking there at Arlington. Let's get back to transparency uh, conversation. Adimola Adigun, thank you so much for uh, uh, staying with us here on this very important day for the United States as we try to cover all angles of both local and this international event on everybody's calendar. But So let's uh, uh, dig further about why transparency issues, uh, when discussed, are a little bit more elevated in the hydrocarbon industry than in mining sector. Why is that so? Uh, simply because of the value, the value, the values of oil and gas and the import and contribution. I mean, the legal earnings from the mineral sector is less than $200 million annually. I mean, range between $220, $230 million. Now, compare oil and gas, which is a major contributor to revenues in the country. I mean, even as poor as it's performing right now, it's still 47.3% of all earnings and 897 of foreign exchange earnings. So when something is such a dominant um, product in the country, um, it tends to have this kind of convoluted kind of management. And again, remember that we found oil before we found the country. So we have the oil in 1959, we found the country in 1960. So th that has made sure that oil dominates the sector. And if you've followed the oil sector for a long time, you realize that the dependency on crude sales is um, so much. So that again merged in controversies. And over the years, we've had military leaders and civilian presidents who've turned the oil and gas to their private, private properties. And they can make you rich overnight by giving you a license or make you a millionaire by a, a, allowing you to prospect and sell. Now, in the mineral sector, you can't do that. It's a little more difficult, a little more complex. We don't have any big 
um, ticket, like maybe uranium or something. We have quantities of gold, we have silver, we have tin, but not in the quantities that are commercial enough. And that's why you don't see the big boys in the country. You don't see the big boys like Tinto, we're not Tinto, and so in Nigeria. But when it comes to oil and gas, you have all the majors, all in the country. So oil and gas is bigger, the revenue contribution is higher, um, the sector growth is bigger, um, it has more potential earnings, and the impact is much more. So that's why um, we have more controversies in oil and gas and less in minerals. Minerals uh, is a very small market. Um, there's likely a lot of theft going on there. But even with the whole value of the market, I don't think we have $300 million of, of minerals in the country. Okay, just a quick one before we take a break and we'll come back to you. Uh, Ademola, when we talk about transparency reporting in the oil and gas sector, the NNPC comes first to mind. Why is that so? Uh, NNPC, uh, because of its peculiar nature, holds in trust the assets of the country in oil and gas. So NNPC operates the joint ventures on behalf of the government. Um, it's part of the um, issues, a lot of prospecting, um, 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 manages the petroleum sharing contracts. NNPC does a lot for the country. So NNPC um, is virtually the, the earning body on oil and gas. So that's why there's a lot of controversy around NNPC. All the JVs, the PSE, service contracts, and others all come from NNPC. In fact, um, NNPC is, is both quasi-regulator Quasi service provider, quasi contractor, quasi legal body, quasi minister of finance, quasi everything. It's just a, just a big um, monolith that has been very inefficient, very ineffective, low contributions, um, serves its own purposes, serves its own staff, doesn't serve the country well, but it's been like that for so many years. So that's the issue. Okay, we'll talk about more around this than the PIB, if the PIB is the uh, silver bullet for the sector. Let's ramp up on that conversation. After the break, we'll look into the petroleum industry bill and other oil producers. Right after the break, Ademola Adigo back with us. Ademola, let's uh, continue this. Thank you very much for uh, standing by with us on the show tonight. So let's just continue straight from where you were talking about. The NNPC had been reporting its financials over the last couple of years, and uh, just this year it reported on 2018 and 2019, which has been commended. Do you think this is dipping the toe in the water for the NNPC in terms of transparency in its financial reporting activities? Um, I think it's a commendable act action. Um, Mele Kiari, the GMD, promised to do that, and he's done that. Um, there's still a lot to do. I mean, the report is um, good. It's a starting point. But that's not enough. I mean, there's a lack of understanding of the reports by many. So the pension of the report is also convoluted. And you need to be very well versed in the laws of the country, understanding some accounting to understand the laws. That shouldn't be. Um, an NMPC report for an oil company that takes all the revenues of the country should be easy to read and understand and digest. It shouldn't be something where you need to have an MSc in, in, in petroleum economics to understand it. But it's a step where something we commend. Um, you mentioned the PIB. The PIB is not a magic bullet. There is no law that can be a magic bullet in the sector. Um, the PIB will improve the governance of the sector, will improve benefits for those communities, will improve um, investments if it is well implemented and supported by other laws. Because um, you don't, one law doesn't change the whole circumstances of an oil and gas sector. Um, the PIB is there. This is the fifth time we're trying it. We've been on this journey for 19 years. Uh, doing a very long journey for us. So it's good we get it right this time around. But it's not the magic bullet. It's a good step. It should do the right things. But the key means that other things that are necessary are done as well. Um, there are still some gaps in the parent PIB as it is. Um, NMPC's liabilities are not well treated. Um, NMPC's assets are well represented. There are still some issues to, rep to, to address. But it's a step forward, and I think it's something we should all look forward to and hope the parents are sent to it this time around. But do you think the PIB, uh, perhaps we need another law part of legislation that will help us capture how much Nigeria really gets when it comes to royalties and all of that? Because we understand there are still a whole lot of billions and billions of dollars in uncollected uh, royalties and all of that. So do you think the NNPC uh, reporting... It captures everything, or we need the Minister of Petroleum Resources to actually start reporting, perhaps in an oversight way to the National Assembly, the relevant committees. Well, the key issue right now is an absence of a strong regulator. Um, what we have right now is DPR, which itself is an inspectorate, 
and doesn't have any laws backing it. Um, DPR by itself is a department of Ministry of Petroleum Resources, and that's where a lot of capturing of revenues should be on, on, on there. Then there's also challenges with FRS as well. FRS seems to focus on non-oil, where it gets retention, and focuses less on oil, where it doesn't get any money. So there are a lot of agencies that need to be improved upon to ensure we get the maximum benefits. But um, having said that, there's been an improvement. Um, what is happening in 2018, 2019 is not what happened in 20, 2001. So there's a movement forward on that area. But the key issue for us is saying, how do we ensure a strong regulator for the upstream, downstream, and midstream? How do we ensure that NMPC's books are par with what you see from a mobile account or shell or things? How do we ensure NMPC becomes, I mean, under the PIB, it's proposed to become a limited liability company open, owned by the Ministry of Finance. But how do we ensure that there's private sector participation as, as time goes forward, so that we can have more standards of reporting that are equitable and ensure that the less of governance inter, government interference, which is a big key issue, reduces. So there's so many other things to do. The PIB won't do all that. The PIB will do some part of it. I mean, the PIB proposes tune regulators, which is good. But then there are other things necessary. There's implementation, and then the issues of liabilities are not there. And then I'm not comfortable, for instance, with the lack of private sector participation in NMPC. So it's NMPC limited. But then the presidency chooses all the board directors. The president still chooses all the le leadership. That's still the problem we have. And the minister of petroleum, who per chance is the president, is still too powerful. And these are the kind of issues that have led to bad governance, poor judgments, um, allocation of resources to personal people, and then the lack of um, benefits for most I, I, Nigerians. I, I so these wanna, issues I, I, need to be Do you want an NMPC listed on the stock exchange, for example? Is that the kind of thing you're looking for, a PLC? On the long run, shot, it has to be. I mean, we've seen that when you put a company under private sector rules and governances, things change. When you have reporting guidelines that are there, things change. I mean, under the proposed law, it becomes limited under CAMA. And the CAMA is good. It's a new CAMA bill, um, again, which needs to be published. I mean, I don't think anybody has seen the published CAMA. But then that shouldn't be enough. You shouldn't have the president choosing everybody there. Now, if you dilute equity in an NPC Limited and say, well, maybe 10% of the uh, stock is owned by Nigerians in the public private sector, then th that kind of board representation can lead to better governance and lead to better benefits. I mean, why would an NMPC be hiring a thousand staff whenever that person is laying off? I mean, isn't it funny? All prices are crashing, are diminishing. The NMPC has 1,000 staff where you're making losses. Every other oil company in the world is shedding staff. This is part of the poor governance. And then nobody's asking questions. Nobody can hold them accountable. This is a, this is a, a corporation that's a law to itself that does what it wants to do. But anybody can say anything because, well, it was the government and it's government itself. Interesting scenario. Well, but let's hope that we all get that private sector. Uh, you talk about 10, 20 percent. I'm sure if that goes on the stock market today, this night is going to be picked up before uh, daybreak tomorrow morning. I'm sure you guys in the industry has some money. No, no, I, I, I'm, 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 not, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure about I'm not sure about that. <laughs> No, I'm not sure about that. I mean, anybody understanding okay. the liability of NMPC will be very worried of buying it. If let's, NMPC publishes liability let's and assets, it, it must be. Let's leave it there for today. We'll continue this conversation some other time. Thank you so much, Adimola Adigun, oil and gas consultant. We thank you for coming on the program.